A crucial element of the equipment is the belt and shoulder system. This is the thing where you put the pouches. It should be comfortable. I remember when we were taught, we attached these pouches in a convenient way. Then I went for a run and worked out with it and changed its location. In the end I found a convenient location for myself. It's good to have a Kevlar insert in this belt, which provides additional protection. I feel comfortable when this belt wide and tight. And it's not dangling. I would say that you should never be lazy to customize equipment for yourself, because a lot of people received or bought a bulletproof vest or the harness and shoulder system and do not adjust. But you should understand that in a bulletproof vest armor must be at the correct level. That is, to protect the main lethal zones. The belt should not dangle. I saw a person wearing a harness doesn't customize it for you, and after the run, he's got a bag on his crotch. <laughs> you often see someone running separately from his belt and shoulder system. It jumps up and down, everything is falling out. So it's also worth taking the time to securely fasten the equipment in the results and in general. Because often a man is running, and a horn, or a turnstile, or something else drops out. And the loss of equipment is not so pleasant. Reasons why belt and shoulder systems are popular. These systems, or as they say war belts popular, because they take the pressure off your shoulders and the spine from the load. Because if you put everything on, there's going to be a lot of pressure to the spine, your shoulders will get tired quickly, you get tired faster in general. Using the combat belt the weight of the equipment can be distributed, so you'll get tired not so fast. You can also hang everything on a combat belt and choose if you're wearing a bulletproof vest today or wearing armored plate clothing to avoid overloading. Because there is a bulletproof vest and clothes for an armored plate. I was just trying to sound smart for a minute. We haven't talked about glasses yet. This is also one of the most important elements of equipment, because there is a lot of dust and shrapnel in the battle, mud, sand, that could get in your eyes. And if a person can't see, he automatically looks like he's wounded. This is especially important in urban combat. When the group enters the building, 100% glasses are required there, because it might ricochet off the walls, pieces of bricks, whatever, fly off. It gets in your eyes, and you can't fight anymore. I also often have to drive machinery. If the speed is higher than 50 kilometers per hour, my eyes are watering. Some dust may be getting in. Rocks, yeah. There are two types of glasses. Masks that attach directly to the helmet and regular glasses. It is advisable to buy ballistic glasses. They're anti-shrapnel. Some manufacturers even claim that their goggles can withstand 12-gauge pump-action weapon. That is, you must have glasses, at least a mask, so that in certain cases to lower them from the forehead to the eyes, to get things done, and then bring it back up. By the way, we had a case when one guy had glasses, just regular glasses that improve your eyesight, and they got hit by shrapnel, and even these goggles stopped the shrapnel. The blow was, of course, weak, but even an ordinary glass stopped the shrapnel. If a piece of shrapnel had hit me in the eye, I wouldn't have an eye for sure. You also need to understand that anything can hit you in a battle. It doesn't have to be a shard or a bullet. This can be a sand, for example. On a recent combat mission, a shell from a tank came in, and a hot sand hit the guy in the eye. And glasses protect against this. 
Anything can come. It's safer to move around the forest with glasses on, so that the branch doesn't get in your eyes. A useful thing in our realities. Also very good are the usual glasses you wear. They are often supplied with different lenses, transparent, sunscreen. And with these orange ones? Yeah, you can go straight to a rave party in these. Raver won't let you lie, will he? You can choose lenses for yourself, you really need glasses. I've read that in American army they give everyone glasses and stuff. The following system is working. If a fighter is wounded, and he was not wearing the right gear. Insurance is not paid. There are some sanctions, which I don't remember exactly. I know what you may not get payout for the task, if you weren't wearing the glasses you were given. It's good to learn from the mistakes of others, but all usually learn from their mistakes. For example, when it hit me hard, I got a concussion because I was not wearing headphones. I really realized that headphones are important. Okay, I think I'll wear it now. Our fighter must have thought the same thing. When this little piece of shrapnel hit his glasses, he realized that glasses are still important. That is how it happens. Even if you have poor eyesight, Modern manufacturers make special inserts. You then order your own lenses for your visual impairment and wearing ballistic goggles. Everything has to be disused. Your body in general should not be visible. So let's talk about the importance of gloves and a balaclava. Yeah, I can't see you at all right now, by the way. How about this? Whoa! And I'm here. <laughs> In general, the role of gloves is also protection. Because during the battle, you can pick up something rusty, infectious, etc. It's hot. When, for example, he fired a machine gun for a while, and then... I need to move it, and it's hot. That's why gloves are needed to protect your hands, as Reaver said, and from high temperatures. As a medical doctor, I carry medical gloves with me, because you may have to deal with liquids and the secretions of another person. This is my security. Combat gloves are a very important piece of equipment. There are regular ones, for example, I have one with pads. I like it with the overlays. A balaclava is a situational piece of equipment. You can wear it or not. This can be a simple dust protection. From high temperatures as well, wicks away sweat, helps in cold weather, protects the face. But wearing a balaclava for a long time with the glasses will not work, because they will just fog up your glasses. I have a neck scarf. I can pull it over my face when we're driving armored vehicles on the transport from above. He pulled it over his face to keep dust out. Then I just pulled it off. And then you go on with your day. In any case, is there some element of equipment which is constantly forgotten, but is it important? Or maybe there's a life hack. What do you need to have with you? Sometimes I throw chocolate in the bag, for example. You said it right. After a full-scale invasion, I had this problem once, when we went into position, and there was no way to bring water and food. I had nothing with me at all. From the little things, I would recommend people some kind of summary. To throw a couple chocolates in there, 
or some kind of nuts. Isotonic. You can have an isotonic. I also had a chocolate bar in my bag. And this bag was chewed through by a mouse. It ate a chocolate bar. It's just a story. You're not very lucky. This could happen once in a million. And it happened to you. More important equipment. For some reason, people often forget about the minimum water supply. I'm not talking about a bottle of water that you can take with you in your backpack, but about the water you carry on you. This can be a hydrator with a special pouch. Nowadays, people hardly use flasks, but you can still have a flask. The flask is a controversial thing, because there is already very little space where you can attach something, so it doesn't bother you. Instead of a flask, I'd rather have a hydrator. You better have a hydrator. You have a straw here and you're drinking. It holds about 3 liters of water. There are hydrators for 1.5 liters. There are for 3 liters. A very necessary thing, especially in the heat. When you're in your deer, it's hot. Large fluid loss from the body because you're sweating. You need to replenish your fluids because in the summer it's very easy you're going to get heat stroke or other troubles from the heat. In the end, we have a person to take to the hospital to help him. <laughs> Well, I would say yes. Infantry is the biggest drive. This is for those who like a crazy military movement. Is infantry cool? Infantry is cool.